Okay, hi students. So what you see in front of you here is the pulsed NMR apparatus. It consists of three parts. The first one is the oscilloscope, of course, which you're all used to. And it turns out that it's where your raw data is going to come from in this experiment. And as you know, the oscilloscope is very flexible and allowing us to look at just about any sort of time domain signal. So that's part one. Part two down here is the... Um, the big control area right here, sort of how you run your experiment. And you can definitely think of this control unit as consisting of three parts here, one, two, and three. Part one over here is called the 15 megahertz receiver. And the 15 megahertz in NMR is intimately tied to the magnetic field strength that exists inside the sample holder over here, which I'll give you a tour of in a minute. That's why it's at 15 megahertz. And I think those numbers will make sense to you soon. But what is in the receiver here is... At 15 megahertz, it's called RF, radio frequency, because it's sort of in the megahertz there. It can basically take in signals from the sample over here into the receiver, do some amplification. There's a gain knob right here. There's an RF out. There's an RF in and a few other things. That's sort of what a 15 megahertz receiver does and is for in this experiment. The third part over here is a 15 megahertz oscillator, amplifier, and mixer. So being a 15 megahertz oscillator, it can generate its own frequency. And you can see I have about 15.25 megahertz adjust on it right here at the moment. So it's putting out a 15.25 megahertz um, radio frequency. It is also driven by this center part over here, which is the so-called pulse programmer. So this thing will generate its 15.25 megahertz, but it's gated or turned on and off by pulses that come out of this middle unit here, which is the pulse programmer. So think of it like an oscillator that can be turned on and off with electronic pulses that come from this. Being a time domain experiment, the pulsed NMR, you sort of want to have careful control over when the RF is on the sample and when it's off, so you can watch time dynamics, say, in the cases when it's off. Now, so what the pulse programmer is over here, there's two pulses it can generate, one called A, one called B, and you can totally turn the knobs and dial in a couple things. One is how wide you want the pulses to be with those top knobs labeled A width and B width. There can only be one A pulse, but you can have any number of B pulses that follow it. You can set the delay between the pulses on this top knob right here, or this, or this top dial right here. And there's some other things like the repetition rate and some other tweaks that you can put up. But essentially, it's a pulse programmer that, as the name implies, allows you to sort of program a sequence of pulses that will come out of this unit. Again, it'll always start with one A pulse, and then you can have from one or more B pulses coming out. And what the pulses will do, they connect directly over here to the frequency generator that tells the frequency generator when to turn on the RF at the frequency as advertised. So I, there should be a high-resolution screenshot of this face on canvas or associated with the experiment associated with the experiment you'll definitely want to study that i'm going to leave a lot of the cables intact the way they normally would be if you're actually in the quantum lab doing this but by looking at that high resolution picture you can definitely trace out and sort of figure out how the receiver the pulse programmer and the frequency generator are all sort of interlinked in this experiment lastly over here we have the sample holder which is probably the most uneventful one that we deal with. You'll probably never touch it, even if you're doing this. I mean, did I lose focus? Even if you're doing this in the real quantum lab. Try to get my focus, focus back here. There we go. No. Yeah, let me switch to manual then. Okay, there's some focus back. What this is essentially is a little, has a little door on it. And this is the sample of mineral oil that you'll do the pulsed NMR experiment with. So you may not be able to see it on this video shot, but just a little glass vial, and I can see the level of mineral oil about, uh, about halfway up from the bottom. You just put it into a little hole inside of here, and essentially what's around the, the ends here on this side and this side of the hole, these sort of roundish things I think you can see, those are magnets that set this, I believe, 12 Gauss magnetic field that you can read about in the write-up. So by putting the mineral oil inside of here, it's immediately in a static 12 Gauss field. That, of course, forms a z-axis and something for the protons in the mineral oil to start processing around. And there's some other electronics in here that, of course, allow me to deliver and receive radio frequency signals 
from the amplifier and the frequency generator as I discussed. And so essentially the way the lab would go if you were actually doing this, you would just drop the mineral oil in there as I've done. You would just close the little door there to minimize temperature fluctuations and you'll never even look at this thing again. So we'll just sort of leave it off to the side here. But all the action will, of course be over here. And as I mentioned, the sample you'll be doing studying is mineral oil, pulsed NMR dynamics of mineral oil. And essentially the control panel here is going to both apply and look at receive signals from the sample holder over here. And you look at the results you get both being sent out and coming back on the oscilloscope. And as I mentioned, that's where your raw data will come from. So what we're going to do in the very next video then is I'm going to show you how the pulse programmer works, which is the first exercise in the lab write-up. So stay tuned for a pulse programmer.